Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Palermo, and this is the Lawrence History Project. And uh, we're going to be looking at the history of Lawrence and um, looking at history in particular. You know, if you're young, you may think that the, uh, the uh, study of history is boring. And I would heartily concur. I spent four years in high school uh, listening to the dates of wars. Boring, boring. It was like watching paint dry. And when I got older, I took an interest in history. And uh, how that happened, it's a long story. But basically, you can start your study of history right here. You know, this is a new way of looking at history. If you're young, start with what's around you and walk your way back from there. You're going to see a lot of archival footage. Uh, you're going to see Lawrence as it was 50, 70, 100 years ago. And you see the stories. And once you realize what's there, you can walk your way back further and further into time and develop a sense of history. Very important. You know, I was a teacher for 43 years. And re recently, the past 10 years or so, I had a lot of young Latino students uh, in Lawrence who wanted to know about the history. They were curious. This is a wonderful thing because knowing history gives you a sense of place and it stabilizes you. And this is something that we should um, encourage in the young. Now today, I have a uh, guest with me today. I don't know if he's a guest or he's going to be a co-host for this. We really haven't worked that out yet. But he's Tom Delisle, known Tom for many, many years. We go back to the 1950s. Tom had a very a successful career in healthcare, and he has a great passion in his life and of photography. And he's been taking photographs of Lawrence since the 1950s. We also want to thank the Lawrence Immigrant uh, Archives for their permission to use some of their pictures today. Uh, Tom, welcome to the program today. Thank what you have Mark. you got for us today? Uh, today we have some shots, uh, some of mine, some from the archives. Um, a lot of the black and whites are from the archives. There are some good photographers back in the day. A lot of the shots were from um, right before the urban renewal, when that was going on late 60s, early 70s, in different areas around the city, mainly North Lawrence, probably a few from South Lawrence. But there were a lot of good photographers back then. They wanted to document what was going so fast. You know, in, in the middle to late 60s in Lawrence, there was an urban renewal project that swept through Lawrence like a hurricane. And behind it, you can imagine, if you haven't guessed, uh, was a great deal of politics. Uh, I think um, cities like Lawrence and Haverhill too, Haverhill lost a lot of great architectural treasures during that time. Uh, I think the cities were being paid uh, to knock down stuff. And in Lawrence, um, there were enormous swaths, acres and acres of buildings that were just taken down um, without any real regard to the historical value. Obviously, some of you, some of them, Tom, you mentioned, I mean, some of them really, uh, most of them probably needed to be taken down. But there were a lot of great treasures that were taken down because it was money. There was money involved. No surprise. Politics, does that surprise you at all, Tom? Not at all. No, no, no. no. Uh, if all. you're old enough to have gray hair, uh, you know how the world works. Well, um, is there anything you wanted to add to that uh, before we get uh, start looking? Uh, uh, just at, the, uh, the thought that you said, history and, and the politics, bringing those together. I thought of Tip O'Neill's great line, all politics is local and all history is local. Yeah. So it's nice that some of the younger kids, the younger generation, are interested in the local history, and I see that when I go to the, the Immigrant City Archives, high school students, college students from um, UMass Lowell, but it's nice to see some of the local high school students from the Lawrence area really interested and amped up on the, on the history. They want to learn as much as they can. I think, the, I think of the Roman philosopher Cicero who once said, what was that quote? To remain ignorant of history is to remain a child. Have you ever heard of that? No. Yeah, I that's, heard a that. great, that's a great quote. That is. To remain ignorant of history is to remain a child. And it's a natural function. of It's the most natural thing in the world of people to be curious. You know, my mother's 100 years old, 
And I still have to go to the library and bring her back books, sometimes shopping bags full of books. So, so it's it. natural. So That's great. You know, we hope we can in- incite or inculcate some kind of love of history, starting with what we have here, what's around you, and then work your way back. Uh, you know, um, you and I, Tom, we've often talked about the Spanish Civil War. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I, I think in high school, I couldn't even think of anything more boring than the Spanish Civil War until I went to Spain. And I lived in Madrid, and I talked with people. I saw stuff. I talked with eyewitnesses, people from both sides of uh, that terrible war. And I think the same is true of your travels in Europe mm-hmm. brought you a visceral understanding of what happened. And now... I'm so interested. We have so many interesting conversations on me right. about what happened in Spain back in the 30s. And you know, it ties in. There's Marxism, uh, struggles of work. It ties into everything. Everything is connected in history. And I think, I hope you'll see that. Well, without further ado, Cassie, would you please uh, put up our first picture? Let's see what we have. Oh, I remember that. Don't you, Tom? I, I know the area. Is it um, Chestnut Street? Possibly on um, off of Lawrence. You know what? You will see the donut shop. The donut shop. And then the next yes, sign, if you can see the next sign, mm-hmm. that's Nick Maloof's oh. restaurant and nightclub. Okay. And you know that's 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 pretty typical of those days when you lived. I mean, that's probably about early to mid '60s mm-hmm. before they took them all down. Yeah. Just. They went through like a. My father said it looked like Berlin after the oh, war. Sure. You know, it's just like a bomb, they bombed it all out. But uh, well, like Mariupol, <laughs> unfortunately now. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, nothing changes. Nothing changes. Uh, I think that was White Street. If it was Nick Malus, you know, I think it might have been. It was, but in you that know, area, in in, in those bishops. days, you could go to. Uh, uh, you can go everywhere. You could walk everywhere. Walk everywhere. I mean, you walk to a nightclub even. Walk to a gymnasium, walk to school. You know, people weren't so dependent on the automobile. We never got rides anywhere. No, no, we walked everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Everyone walked everywhere. Yeah, you didn't think you didn't think anything different. Huh? What else have you got here, here, Cassie? Could we see the next photo here, Cassie? Oh, you so you see what this is? The, the old Shay Wen. Shay Wen. That's from the. Um, I'm not sure if that's from the archive. There's another website. There's a man. I I should know his name. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you'll step forward if you see this shot. I think it's um, it may be one of yours. He has some great shots of Lawrence and pic- particularly around Essex Street during this era. But this is so of its time. The zeitgeist with the plaid pants, it just nailed it. Whoever took that shot had a great eye. Well, there is quite a story here too. Uh, and it pro- I, I like to think it demonstrates uh, Professor Milton Friedman's school of um, economics, mm-hmm. the supply, the supply and demand. Right. This is right next to the mills. Mm-hmm. Now the guys got out of the mills. They wanted to have a few beers, so the beer was cheap, mm-hmm. and they had strippers in there. Mm-hmm. But. The strippers. Exotic dances. Exotic yeah. dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got to have the, <laughs> the, 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 the language correct. Um, the strippers were, I mean, they didn't want to pay them much. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'd typically see women 20 pounds or more overweight, people in their, women in their 30s, their 30s with stretch marks and uh, whatever, you know, you didn't have, uh, it's not like going to a strip show in Montreal or Boston or New York. Women are like, you know, they work out two hours a day. There's not an ounce of fat on them. Um, so it's a supply and demand. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting how the market can respond to each uh, point in the, in the dynamic global dynamic right when it talks to talk about price mm-hmm. and talk about goods and services so i always think of that when yeah. i see that if you build cheap it they will beer. come <laughs> yeah cheap beer and um women yeah they'd find women that were probably in the biker chicks mm-hmm. and they they probably had one last spark of feminine charm if you could call it that mm-hmm. um before they were too old for that kind of yeah. work and I remember, and I haven't seen any photos of the wreck, the Lawrence wreck. Oh, that yeah. great bowling alley with pool tables and candle pin, a few duck pin lanes. I understand they used to have a um, 
a, a ballroom in there. Oh, yeah? And they had the big bands in there. Wow. Uh, Tommy Dorsey and uh, Glenn Miller. Mm-hmm. And those ty- I don't exactly, but those type of bands. They had some big names come to Lawrence back in the day. And I, I heard Willie Moscone used to come once a year or so. Yes, and play pool. And play yeah, pool. Yeah, they had a large pool. It was a big there. draw. Yeah. Okay, next, please. This was a bank at the corner of, what I'm going to say, Hampshire? Hampshire Street in Essex. And I believe the building may still be there. Mm-hmm. Although, look at the grandeur of it. It's right. a bank. Yes. It's a bank. And from the cars, it's the Lawrence Historic, uh, Historic Archives, I believe. Look that would have been taken from um, in front of Woolworths, probably diagonally across, if it was Lawrence yes, and, around I mean, the, Essex around that, around, around that end of, of Essex Street. Of course, every downtown was a center of commerce. And it remains so until the automobile supplanted it uh, back in the 60s where stores and whatever, everybody retreated the suburbs. Mm -hmm. We have a different model of commerce. Okay, next please. Oh, I look at this and I say prime rib. Prime rib, French fries, the destination place. People north of Boston, everyone knew Bishops. Oh, and yes. Everyone loved it. No, the, including movie actors, uh, professional athletes, mm-hmm. has come down to Bishops. Yeah. Especially for the prime rib. Prime, the businessman's luncheon. Oh, yeah. Three, would, martini, three martini lunch. Mm-hmm. My father was, would do those from time to time. And uh, <laughs> Bishop is one of his favorite places. Oh, you know? yeah. It was, a different, it was a different time, you know. Mm-hmm. The, things were more relaxed. Uh, and don't forget, when he had a job... You know, for a large company, you probably has had a, unless you really screwed up really bad, you had a job for life. You had lifetime security. Right. And corporate America would prom, pretty much promise you that. Mm-hmm. That was the that was the era of the company man. You give your life to the company, the company will give you back security. Mm-hmm. Of course, there was holes in that. Everything put together falls apart, as they say. But Bishop's was a great place. Great place. For, um, and the Uda Lounge. I probably miss downstairs. Yeah, where they would have quality music. Our friend Manny, Manny Bagdan, oh, yeah, played the yeah. wood. He used to play there occasionally, and it w- it was authentic, old school. It was the real deal. Good level of musicianship. Yeah, it wasn't a fake imitation of the old world. It was the old world. The old it was world. Like really, <laughs> the Hagopian family yeah. and a, another family, um, <laughs> musical family from Lawrence. Oh yeah, I think they played there pretty often. Oh, no, delicious. Okay. I, I love that food. I don't know about you, but oh, I yeah. love Lebanese food, Middle Eastern food, mm-hmm. um, everything, everything about it. It's just so amazing. Okay, we went to the next. This was, I, Tom just told me this is actually not Lawrence, but it gives you a sense of some of the problems. Uh, and this is, it's sad to think that this is still going on uh, in uh, in the world, uh, child labor, mm-hmm. uh, kids being forced to 50, 60, 70, God only knows how many hours they are working behind these machines. Right. And, you know, I was a, I was a vice president of my union. You could say a lot of bad things about unions. I'm not, you know, but there's a lot of good things about it. And the one thing unions did was they get rid of this stuff. People got fed up with uh, this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of kids used to get what they call wool and lung disease because they had, right. they had so much wool in the air. The kids would get their, their, their lungs would become insulated, as it were, with woolen particles. Right. And it's a form of em- emphysema, I guess. We call it in those days. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's different from emphysema, but they called it woolen lung disease. Probably was horrible. emphysema. How yeah. horrible. And in those days, people didn't even think of wearing a mask, a dusk mask or no, anything no. like that. You just get in there. If you complain, you know, you're considered a wimp or something. Just mm-hmm. get in there and, and do it. It's absolutely, absolutely horrible. That shot was actually taken by, by Lewis Hine. Oh, yeah. Him yeah. and Jacob Reese were the, the preeminent American mm-hmm. photographers mm-hmm. during that time. Jacob yeah. Reese, he, he was like in the um, five borough section, yeah. Tammany Hall, Bandits, um, Bandit's Alley, famous photographs from New York. Squalid condition. Squalid is the only name for it. Oh, yeah. That shot was from North Carolina. Yeah. 
and he he composed that to make the girl look small compared to the machines. That was intentional. Yeah, he yeah. pulled back. He didn't want it close. But he did take shots in the Lawrence Mills, Lewis Heim. Yeah. He was the preeminent photographer of that um, sort of that consciousness, that um, mindset, you know, that helped. Yeah, yeah. With the old 1912 strike, the whole mm-hmm. union thing, like you said. Yeah, I think uh, people are going to have to come together again mm-hmm. uh, and and address a lot of a lot of issues, um, social issues, homelessness. Uh, you know, the continual downward pressure on uh, working people. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I think it's it's hard to really it, to to uh, to enjoy freedom, if you're poor, right? What freedom do you have? It's just uh, there has to be a certain level, a certain basic income level. I'm not arguing from a you know communism or anything. I'm just saying that people are going to have to get together and really work this out. So, talking about all the, the particles in the air, mm-hmm. I was talking with um, some Jonas Jonas Stunza, another great Lawrence yeah, story. Yeah. Everyone knows mm-hmm. Jonas, and I think he was the one who told me the story about his uncle worked in the mills. Lawrence Mills, and there was so many, so much fiber in the air. His wife would make him a sandwich for lunch. She'd wrap it in cloth, like a towel, wax paper, and a third level of a towel. It took three le- levels, layers, yeah. to keep those fibers out of the sandwich and have to eat it outside. You know, the That's w- how prevalent the worst it was. job, speaking of fibers, the worst job I ever had. I had some really nasty, nasty jobs. Uh, I had the the four Ds. Have you ever heard of the four D jobs? No. Dirty, depressing, dangerous, and disgusting. <laughs> but but the most disgusting one I ever had was working on the Sunday cre- cleanup crew, a local mill mm-hmm. located on Broadway. You know the one I'm talking about. Oh yeah, I yes, yeah. It. I did a two week stint there on one summer, just one. You got to go in there, go mm-hmm. into the the pipes itself and just clean them out with the yeah. air air. Exactly. Oh. I'd get home and my my clothes, my shirt. Sometimes I have to throw it out. It was just Im- completely covered. It's good. It just smelled with mm-hmm. solvents. Embedded. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. Horrible. Impregnated. It? It. Yeah, impregnated with these awful solvents. Oh boy. Well, I'm glad I don't have Tough to do times. that again. Right. I think I'd ride the rails. Ride the rails. If I if I, if I had like a, Billy space. Early. <laughs> yeah. If I had to do that. Oh man. Oh well. And what's next, please? Oh, I think we had a different shot of this last week. Yeah. This is Dog's Pizza. Was this the same location? I think yeah. it's the same one. It's the same Chestnut one. Chestnut Street, looking towards Lawrence Street. And this is the one that we used to stop in when we were teenagers, I believe. Yeah. Was it? There, there, well, there was the Jocks on White Street. Yeah. And that was just down the road from the slush place, oh, the next yeah, block we yeah, talked yeah, about. Yeah. I think we stopped at that one more often than the White, the White Street, oh, than yeah, this one. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, everybody went to Jocks. You know what? We talked about slush in, mm-hmm. I think, episode two. If any young entrepreneurs are out there looking for a good product to sell that doesn't cost you much to get st- start selling slush, everybody in Lawrence knew what slush was. Yeah. Slush was, the, and there was no different. There, you notice there was never any different flavors. There's just lemon slush. Lemon. The you real make stuff. it with slush and lemon, uh, real lemons and some sugar. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. Oh, my God. I could go for some right now. I wish there was a place I could get slush right now. The real deal. But you know, you think about your overhead. You know, it's just lemons and sugar and uh, somebody's going to think about this. Somebody's somebody's got to open up a slush shop. Mm-hmm. They won't be selling it like a ni- for a Not nickel, a five nickel cents a like, like but you know, <laughs> a buck or two. I'd be happy to I'd be happy to buy it. Slush. Okay. Slush fund. Start a slush, <laughs> slush fund. fund. Yeah, <laughs> slush fund. Okay, could we have the next one, please? Looking West, 1940. That's Essex Street. Essex Street, yeah. There's Sutherland's on the right. That's still there. Mm-hmm. Actually, a lot of those buildings are still there. It's, it's yeah, the not... Bay State, they've been repurposed, but yeah. a lot of them yeah, are still really there. Yeah, they really have. Look at the buses, you know. In those days, you could get anywhere. You didn't, and again, you didn't need a car to get around. A lot right. of people did fine with the buses. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, as my, my mother was telling me, she said, you know, if you need to get downtown, you go to the bus stop and there'd be a bus in five minutes. Mm-hmm. You right. Know, you didn't even have to check the schedule. There's buses coming in 
for. And I think young people want that. A lot of young people, they don't want to be stuck with an automobile. Mm-hmm. And think of the cost of an automobile. It's like having another kid. Right. And if, if, if you don't have a job in high tech, you're making $100,000 a year. You really, if, if, just think about the times you may have lived in your life without a car. The money just mm-hmm. kind of piles up. You, have, you can right. enjoy a lot uh, higher standard of living, have a lot more available cash in hand if you don't have to support a car all the time. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I, so I think those, everything cycles, you know? We're old mm-hmm. enough to see th- right. how things cycle, huh? I think that's coming Absolutely. back. Okay, but uh, it'll take a little time, but um, maybe it won't take so much. I, every time I go by the gas station, you notice the price is going up. Oh, yeah. And, uh, parking along, paying for parking. Paying for parking. Oh, my God. So, well, prices have always gone up. But I'm predicting that buses will be a lot more commonplace in the future. We're going to get back to a point where you can get anywhere with a bus. Mm-hmm. Okay, next, please. Oh, well, this is obviously a picture of the 1962 For God and Country Parade. There's Grant's. The building is still there. Remember Grant's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The building is still there. Mm-hmm. Stop and Shop. That was the that was the demoulas of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was Stop and Shop, and uh, yeah, I think McCartney's was next to them. I think. I think it was across moved. the street. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. At one point, yeah. I think they were right next on the same mm-hmm. block, mm-hmm. and then they moved. I may be mistaken. Now the Far God in Country Parade. Interesting topic. In fact, I think I would love to uh, have um, you and Joe Bella. Mm-hmm. We could we could call it Joe Bella in here. Joe is the master of Lawrence history. Joe is just knows all of this stuff. I love to really go into the history of the Fort Guard and Country Parade, right? Which started fifty years before, mm-hmm. uh, after the uh, the uh, strike, the Great Strike of nineteen twelve. And it was the original for God and Country Parade, 1912, was not to celebrate the strikers. It was to repudiate them. Well, <laughs> it, was yeah. fla- it was called Flag Day. Mm-hmm. And it was a day to honor God and country. I don't know about you. Not the working man. No, I don't know about you. When, when, I have nothing against God. God's been good to me. And I have nothing against this country. I'm glad I was born here. But I'll tell you what, when they start talking about God and country mm-hmm. and dr- beating the drums of war, right. that's when I, my antenna go up. And I'm, I'm very, very wary of this, this type of thing. That was the McCarthy era, which was just a few years before, yeah. you know, late 50s. In 1912, that was just before world, the beginning of World War II. Mm-hmm. So God and country... My antenna goes up. I think every I start smelling things that don't smell right. Right. So, uh, go out in country. But there's a lot to be said, uh, not just in passing, but we probably could ded- dedicate a whole program to that and look oh, yeah. forward to it. Okay, my friends. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Let's let's go to the next picture. Oh, the Mayfair. Mayfair. That I think. Remembering other slides, I'm about 100 percent sure. I think it's sort of on the Broadway end of Essex Street. Yes, it is. If not on Broadway itself, I I had uh, I knew an old cop, old retired cop, mm-hmm. uh, used to come to Northern Essex and chat with us all the time, tell mm-hmm. stories. And he, I think he mentioned the Mayfair mm-hmm. and Pinkies. I think we have a picture of Pinkies, Pinkies and the yeah. other place, Pinkies, the Mayfair. And the Brass Rail. Brass Rail. These were old taverns in Lawrence. And, mm-hmm. You know, uh, really violent places. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, people get shot, stabbed, beaten up uh, all the time. And these are really rough and tumble places. Mm-hmm. Rudy's, he, too. The, the shot from oh, the Jack's pool, Rudy's oh, the was pool, notorious, the supposedly. Pool room. That, that looks like the pool room in the Jackie Gleason movie, The Hustler. The Hustler, yeah. yeah those are old. Minnesota fats. Oh, yeah, that's just <laughs> probably a few thumbs broken in that place. Like oh Bob yeah, Newman. oh my God, they looked scary. Mm-hmm. Lawrence had a lot of pool rooms in those days. Oh yeah, gritty, gritty, uh, working working man's city. Uh, 
old smokestacks and um, uh, alleys. It, it, something about it. It just looked so early 20th century. And, a, and some of it's left behind, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, could we have the next photo here? Let's see what we have here. Oh, this is yours, isn't it? Didn't you No, take this, this is from, again, I think the, the man who has a lot of shots, I wish I knew his name, and he has a website in Lawrence. We uh -huh. will give you credit when we find out. Um, he had some great shots of Lawrence, but uh -huh. one of the great losses in the city, probably the greatest loss, individual building, I think that was lost. I remember, in the city. People, I was about 1964, 65. I remember people, mm -hmm. even, even, even my father, who didn't really have any kind of sentimentality over old buildings, mm -hmm. I remember older people saying, what the hell are they doing? Are you kidding? It was even people with no aesthetics, sense of aesthetics of this stuff were saying, are you kidding? Right. How could they take that down? Yeah. And, you know, typically, they knocked it down and didn't put anything up there for like 20 years. Right. Just parking lot. Remember, it was called Parking Lot City. Mm -hmm. Park Lawrence was Parking Lot City. And, uh, oh, taking the beautiful post office down. You know, they didn't really develop that sensibility uh, up until probably the late mid to late 70s, saying, hey, why, why don't we repurpose these buildings? Mm -hmm. And I've thought about it a lot. I think people from our parents' generation, they grew up in these tenements. They grew up in the old world, all these vestiges of the past. And, they, and after World War II, they wanted something new. And anything new was good. They loved modernity because it was a break from the past. And they were trying to get out of these tenements. They were trying to get the traction to, 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 to get out of these lives that were restricted. And so anything old was bad. Anything new that it symbolized modernity was good. Mm -hmm. And so you see this stuff. And it happened in Haverhill. Oh, my God, the stuff they tore down in Haverhill is just uh, unbelievable. All during this period, this brief period in the late 60s and went into the early 70s. But that was political, more, like you said, the people. You know, if there had been a referendum, mm -hmm. they never would have torn that down. Yeah, yeah. And I was told, again, by Joe Bella, they could have got, got that building from the federal government for a dollar. Oh, and repurposed. Yeah, it could yeah. have been an art center. Oh, I know. Um, some of the other shots of the interior when they mm -hmm. were building it mm -hmm. back in the day, early 20th century, and the interior shots from the immigrant city, they're magnificent. Yeah, that was that was a crime. Uh, well, look what look what they did in um, Boston, the West End of Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they, they they knocked this whole gorgeous. Well, it was a working people's place, but it had all the brick. You know the brick buildings, the Victorian styles, all the different styles. It was really, really a very interesting neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think they knocked that down in like '62 or '63 or something like that, early '60s. And the way they did it, there was no public input or anything. Mm -hmm. They just city officials came and knocked on people's doors. You know, you have X amount of weeks to get out. We've taken this building down. You know, we'll we'll give you a check for its value. Everybody out. Right, just cleared everybody out. No public input or anything. Mm -hmm. Just, just clear them out. They're slums, and they have to go. And uh, people, people alive today are still angry about that, uh, the way it was done. Not that it was done, but the way it was done. And that's still going on now. Um, on a sour note, but it's happening today. The old Holy Rosary Grammar School. Yeah, yeah. You look at that. That was magnificent. The brickwork on the outside. Mm -hmm. And what I heard, the, the interior woodwork, mm -hmm. it was at a par with the, the post office. And that now, it's it, it, it's a crime. You know, the it's inside's probably all black it's, mold. It's still, it's, it's it still could have standing, been saved. It? It, it could have been if, saved. If somebody knows somebody, he's got some funds, and, you know, we're putting out the call. That's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful building. building. That could make a, somebody a lot of money as a condominium complex. I think that could be changed over. Absolutely. But... Uh, that's a crime, mm -hmm. okay, to, to, to take something like that down. Oh, this is my favorite <laughs> my Tom Delisle <laughs> photograph. Mine too. Tom, would you tell me, uh, I always said, Tom, if we ever put these in a book, this has to go on the cover. Would you please, I'm, it's unfortunately, it was a little cropped. But, a little cropped. But would, we, you tell we have, us, would you tell the story behind yes, this? Yes, we have G Jesus had his, he's not decapitated in this shot. This was at the corner of, um, in Hampshire, and 
Arlington Street, the old Packers Outlet, if you, anyone remembers Packers Outlet, a meat market that had something called luxury loaf, and it had bits that uh, looked like metallic bits in it, <laughs> bright purple, <laughs> emerald green bits, and there's luxury loaf. But I was on my bicycle, and I was coming around the corner, and I happened to see that it was opening day for the Red Sox, again back in the early 70s, and I almost fell off my bicycle. Thank God I had my camera. And I saw that beautiful image, you know, just instant composition. And the bottom of it's cropped a little bit. There's a, the man sitting out front with a TV tray with a tiny transistor radio. And he's listening <laughs> to opening day at the Red Sox. <laughs> and I call, I call the, the caption for that is safe at home. And um, <laughs> he says to me, he sees me taking the picture. I get off the bike. He says, do you believe it? They moved them in yesterday. Can you believe it? <laughs> that is so Lawrence. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> I just... it sums it up. <laughs> it's a, a moment in time. It was a beautiful thing. Okay. Well, with that, uh, I think we'll, um, we'll say goodbye. And uh, I just want to thank uh, people at HC Media and Cassie for helping us out. Uh, uh, Aaron and Matt, Chris, wonderful. If you have a if you have any kind of project, they are wonderful people to work with. The people at the uh, Lawrence Immigrant Archives for uh, kindly uh, working with us, allowing us to use some of their photographs. And, um, and uh, we'll see you again real soon. Thank you out there.